Oh. Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started in just a minute. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, to talk about Zoom grants and training on how to submit a quarterly progress report. I've got my team on the line, or most of them, and so I'd like uh, to take a second and introduce everyone. Um, so, Suze Coyote, are you on, on the Zoom? Samantha, are you on? Yes, Kelly, I'm here. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. So I'm Samantha Hill Cruz and I am the supervisor in charge of grants and currently an Annette Anderson and Jay report to me. Um, that's about it. All right. Thank you so much, Samantha. So you'll be uh, working with Samantha on the regular grants, uh, Homeland Security, EMPG, uh, Department of Energy, and any other one-off grants that we have. Um, Suze, have you joined us? Okay, so she might be having um, some challenges with connectivity. Um, how about we just jump in and I see that Corinne is on the line. Um, she is a contractor with us and helping us in recovery. And we have Faye as well, who is new to our staff, uh, helping us out with recovery. Um, let's see, I'm just kind of scrolling down the list here. I've got Nicole on the line who is assisting both with recovery and uh, regular grants. Shay Schultz um, is working with us on recovery as well. And so those folks are your key point contacts when it comes to um, certain grants and then also assisting you with the Zoom grants. And then I'm also available. So let's go ahead, Nicole, let's go ahead and get started. Hi, thanks for joining us. In today's meeting, we're going to discuss how to submit quarterly progress reports and Zoom grants. The first step is going to be to log into your applicant account. For today's meeting purposes, we're only going to focus on any approved applications that show up in this column on the right-hand side of the page. If you have applications that are incomplete or submitted but not yet approved, you won't have ac access to these functions yet, so we're going to focus only on applications that have been officially approved by the funding organization. To get started, you'll see the name of your application, the title here. You're also going to see some shortcut buttons to add financial reports, which we'll talk about in a separate meeting, or to add quarterly progress reports. You can click on the shortcut button or the name of your application. Either way will take you to the same place. Now this page should look very familiar as this takes you back to the application that you have submitted. Now, you are probably very familiar with this top row of tabs that we see here, but for today's meeting, we're actually going to focus more on the bottom row of tabs. 
To access the quarterly progress reports, we'll click into this middle tab that you see here. Now we've mentioned in a previous meeting that Zoom Grants really functions on this tab-based system. And the same is true for this quarterly progress report section that you're seeing here. Your funding organization will set up various deadlines depending on the, the program that you've applied for and even individual applicants may have different deadlines. So please don't be concerned if you don't see as many deadlines in the tabs that you see here. This is simply just an example account that we're working in today. So you may see more or less deadlines depending on your specific application. Now, as we scroll down, it's important to note that the quarterly progress report template is really set up very similar to the application process in Zoom Grants. You've got various different question styles, as you see here, and every question on the reports must be answered before you can submit that report. So as you can see, I plugged, plugged in some example answers here. And also, I think I left the first one blank, so we'll scroll back up and we'll put in an example answer for this one as well. Now, going back to a previous training that we've had, if you missed that one, you may not know that Zoom Grants engages an autosave feature. Um, anytime that you click or tab out of a field after you've entered text. So in this case, I'll click out of this, this field and you see that brief flash of the saving screen. That lets you know that your work actually has been captured and your answers are saved. You'll go down the list and answer all of the questions. Of course, in this example, I've just got some, some placeholder text there. But once you get towards the bottom of, of the page, you'll see something else that should look quite familiar from the application process. There's going to be a place for you to upload any sort of supporting documentation. This is important even though these documents in this example are not marked as required, it's important that you do upload supporting documentation even though you may not see the checkbox. Some of these documents may not be required for all organizations, but I, I would recommend looking down that list and uploading as much documentation as you can to support your quarterly progress report. In order to upload documents, you'll just follow the same process that we discussed in our How to Apply video. Once you're ready to submit your quarterly progress report, you can either click the button at the bottom of the page to do so, or there's a, a duplicate of this button back up at the top of the page as well. We'll click that button, and as soon as we do, you see the text in red that clarifies or confirms for you that the report has indeed been submitted. I'll also show you another way that you can confirm that your report has been submitted by scrolling up to the top of the page now. Now that we've scrolled back to the top of the page, you can see the tab highlighted here for quarterly progress report one. And this now has a green check mark beside it to let you know that re the report was submitted. In addition to that, there's one more place you can tell that your report was submitted by looking right down here on this side of the page to show that that report was submitted and it will give you the, the date that that was turned in. Another tab that I'd like to point out regarding quarterly progress reports is this one here that's labeled quarterly progress report totals. Now, bear in mind that depending on which program that you're applying for, these tabs may have a different label, but they should be in the same place in your account. We'll click into the quarterly progress report totals tab and take a look at what we have here. This is a tab that's going to summarize all of your responses that you submit in any of the required reports throughout the grant cycle. For example, for question two, each of the columns that you see here indicate a different reporting period. As you hover over those columns, you'll see the hint pop up to tell you which reporting period that you're looking at there. So in this case, it looks like this applicant has only submitted two reports that you see highlighted here. And this is just a way to check your work, a way to make sure that, that you're consistent with your responses or see how that you answered in each of the different reporting periods. So we can scroll down and see that this is applicable to all multiple choice style or checkbox style questions as well. We hope that this brief tutorial has been helpful in showing you how to submit a quarterly progress report in Zoom Grants. Hopefully you've noticed that the process is quite similar to the same process that you use to submit the application. But if you ever do run into any trouble or problems or get stuck on anything with submitting a report, we do encourage you to visit Zoom Grants University, which is at help.zoomgrants.com. I'm highlighting an article here on the screen because it's relevant to our discussion topic today. We actually have step-by-step -step, um, instructions on how to submit reports 
invoices, and adjustment requests, which are the topics that we'll cover in upcoming weeks. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. This wraps up the training portion of our meeting today, but we'll turn it back over to our administrators to open it up for questions and answers. Thanks again. Okay, so um, that was Anna Graham, uh, who is our customer service representative uh, for Zoom grants, and she pre-recorded that uh, so that we specifically have um, examples on our uh, system um, so that she could go through and show you how to do a submission of a program report. Uh, the last week's uh, tutorial was how to submit a grant application. The next week will be how to submit a quarterly financial report. Um, and then a part, uh, the next part, I believe, is change requests. So uh, we have recorded this session. I want to open it up to uh, question and answer. Uh, so I'd like to start with any questions you have specifically for submitting the program report. But after we address those questions, I'd like it like you uh, like to open it up for any questions regarding Zoom. So we'll uh, take any questions. Thank you. So 37 million in general fund, and I know part of that we're looking at. You know, so like this is Kathy from Marshall County. And other things. So just so that number sounds about right to you guys. Um, yeah. Um, Sorry about that. We're getting some feedback. So please make sure everyone's on mute. Um, Kathy from Marshall County, go ahead. Sorry, this is Kathy again. So again, could somebody please remind me how to upload large files? Because I know last week's instruction was that uh, 500 pages in a file uh, could be uploaded. I tried to upload 214 pages yesterday and it didn't take and we don't have Google Docs here. Hi, this is Anna with Zoom Grants. Thanks so much for that question. Um, and I probably should have prefaced last week. I, I remember us talking about that 500 pages. That was um, an estimate. Of course, it's going to depend on if your document is very uh, image heavy or, you know, has a lot of uh, uh, colors or different things like yeah. that. And so 500 was an estimate, but um, the, really the, the page limit doesn't matter so much as the number of megabytes. So if you're able to locate that document and find the properties for the document, um, typically, you know, it's hard to do, hard to show without, without doing it, but um, typically if you right click on the, on the file and it can locate the properties, that should tell you how many megabytes that is. If that document is more than four megabytes, that would explain the issue of, of uploading that because um, the system will only support up to four megabytes. If it is less than four megabytes, that's something that um, I would recommend our tech support team take a look at because if it's less than four megabytes, we should be able to support that. So um, I'm not sure if it's something with the, with the document itself. So um, if you can locate the properties, I would start with that. If it is less than a four megabyte file, I would recommend um, sending a, a message to our tech support team. It's questions with an S, questions at zoomgrants.com. They can probably help troubleshoot that a little bit better than I can from a, from a behind the scenes perspective. Um, but I would definitely start by trying to diagnose the size of the uh, file itself. Yeah, it's 85 megabytes. 85, okay, yeah, that should, uh, yeah. oh, 85, 85. I was 85, yeah. 85, okay, that's gonna be the issue there. If it, I guess uh, perhaps if it's maybe a uh, graphic heavy document, I'm not sure, but yeah, if it's 85 megabytes, that would be an issue. So to resolve that, um, you could, if you have some store, sort of cloud storage like Dropbox, I know you said not Google Drive, but um, Dropbox or any sort of uh, cloud storage space, you could link to that document. The long way to do it, unfortunately, is a little bit more work would be to break that document up into smaller files, you know, individual files. Thank you. 
Hey, Kathy. So this is Kelly. Um, I'm going to talk to Robert too, our IT guy, and see if we flatten that PDF and then break it up. Maybe we could get it into a smaller, uh, smaller file. Okay, because it is image heavy because I have proof of payments in there. Yeah. So let me look, work with him and see. Uh, I have to work with my IT too to see if they will allow us to use a cloud storage. Um, I know that we have, we just uh, got access to like smart sheets through Teams. And I think we can actually get the documents through Teams, but the whole idea is to have it archived in Zoom so that uh, in time we can locate that backup documentation. And regardless if we're working from home or for work, um, we can um, access it and, and pay and review you know, those documents. So let me work on that. Uh, Shay, if you're on the line, if you could take a note for that and let's follow up. Or Thank Nicole. you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for us or Anna? Okay, give you a second here. Any questions on how to submit an application from last week or any questions on any issues that you're having with Zoom? Um, we've got the team available to answer. So we'll take any questions. Kelly? Yes. This is Karen Taylor from Clark County. Yes. My question is on the QFR. Up where it has the amount requested and the amount of the grant up at the very, very top. There's nothing pre-filled in that part of the document. Is that the way it's supposed to be? So the, the uh, quarterly financial report has all the data. Uh, it goes, uh, it actually preloads the data of the data that's supposed to be in that report. Now, if you're seeing blank boxes that you can type into, those boxes are what you can edit, but everything else should, should appear there. Um, if it's not appearing or you feel like there's missing data, I'll jump onto Teams with you and you can share your screen with me um, and we can, we can troubleshoot that. Okay, um, because our 20 awards, none of them have the information preloaded in them. Oh, interesting. Well, let's take a look at that. If you have time after this meeting, um, okay. uh, let's uh, jump on a call together and I might pull some of my staff in as well. Okay. All right. Any other questions for us? So I want to remind everyone um, that we have two different email addresses. Um, and of course, you can call our cell phones. Cell phones right now are the best way to get a hold of us. Our desk lines, uh, unfortunately, we can't forward our desk lines because it uh, kind of shuts down the state system. So if you need to get a hold of us, please call us on our cell phones. Um, if you need technical assistance, uh, please get a hold of us at disaster-recovery at dps.nv.us or D, excuse me, dps.state.nv.us. Um, and it's right on the screen, right in front of you um, on the shared screen. And then of course the Homeland DHS grants at dps.state.nv.us. You can also call the main line, 775-687-0300 uh, for assistance. And um, our sign, uh, our login or sign in or sign off uh, on the emails um, should have everyone's contact information. So if you've received an email from one of us, our cell phones and our hours of operation uh, for individual employees is listed there. So I really uh, encourage you to contact us if you need help. Um, it may be a few hours before we can get to you, um, but um, we are available and we are hiring additional staff as well. So my staff is working hard um, to provide as much customer service as we possibly can. In closing, I just wanna ask, one more time, do you have any questions for us? Okay, so we're going to send out the link uh, for this training so you can refer back to it. Uh, we had some challenges with Zoom last week um, and transferring that link. And so you're probably gonna get two links from us, one uh, for how to submit an application, and then this one on how to submit a program report. Uh, 
um, the next one, how to submit a financial report. And then the last one, how to submit a change request. Again, thank you for joining us and have a good day.